welcome to the podcast that buffs your Hearthstone game. This is Villain's Chosen. Not all who wander are lost. visionaries and welcome to Velen's Chosen. Whether you're a competitive player, an arena specialist, a deck building visionary, or just like having a bit of fun, but not a bit of Henry. The candy bar. We can help you buff your game and achieve your Hearthstone goals. I am Grant Gould, joining you from a World Series filled town, the great city of Houston, where the Astros at the moment were tied up with the Nationals, just in case you're wondering. Uh, is so that it's, something that's, that's going just on. like big all over the news there and all over your town? No, oh, that's all that matters right now. <laughs> uh. World Series. Uh, I mean, in Houston, that's all that matters right now. Um, the game starts at seven; it'll be probably over at eleven. So, uh, so I'm so, not going to talk about it like literally at all. But like we voted a couple days ago, so that's what's on everybody's minds here. Right? Yeah, I heard about your election. Yeah. <laughs> I follow that stuff. And that's all I'm saying about that. <laughs> All about that. Got it. I get it. I get it. Totally get it. Cool. Uh, Eve, how are Joining me from across the North American economy, that was Eve Martin. Just just saying. Right. Canada. We, we, <laughs> we voted Canada. in Canada. Canada. That's Elections. Happened. Baseball, World Series. That's all that matters. Okay. Show's over. See you guys it later. It is neat though, um, right? Because you sort of end up li living in your own little microcosm and the things that matter to you and everybody around you talks about, you know, like for me, the parents at school and the people at our church and people at work, you know, those are the, the talking points. And then you sort of jump yeah. out to where you live and it's like all about... What what's the sport? Baseball. Baseball. I was gonna guess that, but then I didn't want to look dumb, so I just wanted America's to... pastime, right? A gentleman's game. But they get pretty hot and heavy about football too. So footballs, you know, baseball people are passionate about it, and it definitely ramps up around the World Series time. Like it gets a little bit more nuts, and that's kind of the same for all the big sports and here in the states uh football i think is just generally just gaga like people especially in texas oh my gosh texas and football it, you might as well just spell texas f-o-o-t-b-a-l-l -L, because it's just <laughs> it's just the the way it's valued down here is just in my mind it's just off the hook we but stand uh, hockey opinion. here in, in yeah. canada that's that's our thing but i can relate to hockey though because up in michigan where i'm from hockey's way important mm -hmm. you know you know, hockey's big. You get deal, cold so. enough there for it to be. Yeah, it does important. get cold enough, and the wing, the Red Wings, at least at once upon a time, were a really good hockey time, hockey team. I mean, yeah, so, yeah. So uh, had a lot of good Russian players. <laughs> well, where I'm time. from, we go for the Canucks. Go Canucks, and they're doing pretty dang good this year. So that's good. You know how they have like good years, and then they have like in between, and then rebuilding mm -hmm. years. We had a couple yeah, of those yeah. rebuilding years where they weren't even really. I mean, the hardcore fans still watched them, but it was painful. And now we're getting back into the, like, really decent younger players. So do you cool. have a Canucks jersey? Yes, I do have a couple of them. <laughs> Doggone. <laughs> That's awesome. That's good. You're not a real fan unless you have a jersey, right? <laughs> yeah, but they're all men's jerseys. They're all, like, huge. I need to get, like, a, you know what the stupid thing is? If you want to get a woman's jersey, they're, like, pink. They don't make women's sizes in like the normal legit colors. I bet you could find one. I, I you could. could. I should order it online you... because like yeah. I don't want a pink Canucks jersey. Like what? <sighs> Stop making all women's I mean, stuff sure... pink, people. <laughs> right. I'm sure there's, you know, there's some women out there that want it. And sure, certainly they probably wouldn't have made it if they didn't yes. have a market for it. But yes, I'm pretty true. sure that there's probably an equal amount of women's like, I just want the real one. Like right? I can see I could see my daughters going both ways. Like a pink one would be cool, but I think I like the real one too, so you know that's my daughter it's, she's like why would i get like a less than good thing i want the thing the thing the good thing not the, the female version of years. the thing <laughs> yeah that's you know a what, whole though? other story that i could talk about for too long for way too long you know what though <laughs> women down here in texas wear camouflage and then they also wear camouflage that has pink laced through it as like a fashion statement that's a thing 
you know what to each their own if you love that stuff that's great and i support you but if you're looking for something and you can't find it because that's all there is then that sucks it's a little bit dumb yeah anyways i guess we could probably get on over to the hearthstone blizzard universe and all the many shenanigans that you know goings ons that are uh or is it goings ons or is it goings on? I don't know. Goings you know on what? Seems like it's probably Whichever right. one sounds less awkward because they both sound pretty awkward. Let's just like <laughs> briefly, briefly touch. I know probably if you haven't been living under a rock, you know this already. But the Blitzchung yeah. thing was, let's call it wrapped up. Resolved, perhaps, Resolved. maybe? Ish. Blizzard's president <laughs> came out and like rolled it back hard. And I think that was enough for a lot of people, which is fine to just kind of be like, you know what? You admitted you made a mistake. You rolled it back. It's fine. Um, Blitzchung will get his money. Mm -hmm. He is now only suspended six months instead of 12. He is still a grandmaster. And the two casters are suspended six months instead of, you know, fired we're never working with them again yeah so if you want to go read his statement um and you know read into how sincere it is whatever that's up to you (laughs) (laughs) but i think it was well for me personally it was a lot more than i was expecting i yeah i actually didn't expect it to be honest but it happened yeah and we could even take credit for that. Not not us personally, but like the entire Blizzard community for making that outcry and saying we're not okay with this and we hold you accountable. You can pat yourself on the back for that because I don't think it would have happened otherwise. I'm pretty dang sure it wouldn't have happened otherwise. So your voice was heard. Mm-hmm. I yeah. still think BlizzCon is going to be interesting. The power though. of community. <laughs> Well, so can we segue into that? Has anybody, there's been buzz about the lack of, is it a schedule? It, it was for revealed. Blitz, for, it was revealed. It finally. was revealed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I, I, I've been under a rock at work because stuff to do. But like yesterday, as recent, I believe, as yesterday, yes. I thought I saw stuff that was like nobody knew anything and people didn't know what was going yeah, on. Yeah, Ro, like, what's going on? Uh, who I follow and mm-hmm. is like all in uh, up on that stuff was mm-hmm. like reading into it and he was so convincing he's like this means there's like a new ip if there's so much stuff that they're not showing and they're waiting until the last minute this convinces yeah. me that there's going to be something new and they don't want to put it in front of like the public eye too soon or people will figure everything out apparently hearthstone has like one of the bigger stadiums this time instead of just interesting kind of being in the basement so that's cool that yeah. that lends itself to in the basement <laughs> <laughs> with your kids no i'm shocking. <laughs> it lends itself to speculation that they're having a big announcement maybe something a little more than just a new expansion maybe some kind of new play mode or like tournament you know? mode yeah right <laughs> we were just joking for about three years guys we really were working on it <laughs> yeah so that oh boy is exciting they may have a new ip to announce which is exciting mm. um i'm I'm glad they came out with this roll black of Blitzchung (laughs) because I feel like some people are able to kind of look forward to BlizzCon more now that they've kind of made peace with how they feel about Blizzard as a company. Not that everything Mm -hmm. is like all good now, (laughs) but they're willing Mm -hmm. to, I don't know how you would say it. They're willing to make changes based on feedback. And that is the Blizzard that I know. They are also a huge company that is involved in China and that's not going to go away quick, but they're willing to walk things back according to feedback and that's how they've always been there are things that you just kind of have to do as a big company that like it wouldn't be blizzard anymore it maybe it could just be that maybe blizzard makes more money off of um non-china nations than it does off china and i'm pretty sure they do i think that's pretty much fact but um Maybe they just looked at it and said, look, we don't want to lose business. Because well, I've heard... it's important enough, right? Well, I've heard a, um, I heard an interesting discussion. And I don't mean to get into the weeds on this too much. The question was asked, uh, I don't remember who was interviewing, but they were interviewing a, a Walmart CEO or an executive, 
so I don't know, it wasn't the CEO, it was an, an executive. And the question was posed or prefaced by saying, you know, companies are starting to, are starting to become more politically active mm -hmm. more than traditionally have done so. Um, and they said, you know, if you do agree, agree or disagree with a uh, company's policies, what really gets uh, the attention of the people who make those decisions, whether they're going to be politically active or not. And they said, consumers, you know, it, they want to say that, oh, you know, we're doing this, we don't care about the product. But if they have to appeal to a board, you know, if there's a, if they have a, you know, stockholders and stuff like that, then the money is what talks more than anything else. So people would like to think that the businesses are super politically active in this and that, and that is true to a point. But at the end of the day, if they're not uh, appeasing their stockholders and whatnot, it don't fly. That's what he was saying. And I thought that was really interesting. And it wouldn't surprise me if they maybe took stock, no pun intended, in that particular uh, avenue from the Blizzard standpoint of view. Because, you know, when you have major casters and people leaving the game, yeah. I wondered what their – I wondered – what magnitude that was you know because we don't know we don't have the data but like how many people actually just can can their account you know what i mean well to know. i mean what i've heard you know as a saying for a really long time is that one person who takes the time to speak out represents a sure. lot more voices Yes. So every time somebody actually takes the time to write something down, to to them, it represents a lot more people that feel the same way but haven't written anything. So yeah. that and also I actually heard a discussion on Blizzlet, of all places. Of all places. <laughs> that, that made me kind of think that, um, oh my gosh. I lost my train of thought because I was thinking about funny Blizzlet things. <laughs> <laughs> oh they hijacked your thought and then my Shame brain time. went off derailed it was i think it was ted oh what was he saying about blizzard they, they were talking about like people going to blizzcon to protest blitzchung with you know shirts saying free hong kong and things like that but it it doesn't come across cross quite as strong when you're like standing in line at a blizzard blizzcon event to spend like 80 dollars on a backpack with your free china or free hong kong t-shirt there's a just bit of like lack of cogency there incongruousness <laughs> hypocrisy you know there's all kinds of things we could probably I, well and the question the of like how how long do you protest till you feel okay is it like just never play Blizzard games again? Or are you allowed to kind of step back and go, I accept this and now I can continue on with my life? Or like what, what kind of stand do you have to make before you you feel okay with yourself? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really want to ask myself that question. I wasn't sure if I was ready to give up all my Blizzard games cold turkey. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I still shop at Walmart and I still buy a lot of things in America that likely there's ties to China. So why would I just, I'm going to say, cut my nose off to spite my own face mm -hmm. in one area when I'm still just doing the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, so. and that's the other thing. Uh, they, they, they walked back the, the law that they were proposing in Hong Kong, in China. Yeah, that, that was like as recent as like within the last 24 hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It worked. So, like, can... Can we take a little bit of credit for that? For for expanding the message? For making it uh, international? It, it's entirely possible. You know, it, it's entirely po I'm not saying that that's what it was because really the hats off to the millions of Hong Kong citizens for, you know, staying true to, I'm going to say, uh, the right decision here, you know. Because they were lied to. They were said, oh, you can live the way you want to. And then China, in, in, in not surprisingly, went back on what they said. And or the communist government did. And uh, the people of Hong Kong stuck to their guns, I guess you could say. They, they said no masks. They kept wearing masks. You know, they said no protesting. Protesting, they did it. Although they did say there's some conditions. They want the people. They want amnesty for the people that have been arrested. And things like that. So uh, it's, it's like Blitzchung, like amplified this message so much to millions of people 
And I don't know how much of an effect it had, whether the decision was already made and it took this long to go through or, or what. Right. But that's cool that the internet just kind of like spread it like wildfire and got all worked up about it. And then you find out that this, this law that they were trying to push through has been overturned. Yeah. For the time being. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, China still is China. Let's let's be real. But that yeah, when yeah. I read that, I was like, "Wow! Like, how much did that have to do with the message being spread?" Because I mean, gamers are wired in. That's a big part of being a gamer and playing video games and playing online video games is just mm. being wired into the community and having such an online presence. And mm-hmm. so if you get that community riled up about something, yeah, it does spread fast and loud and wide. And maybe we have a bit more pull than we thought we did. And we should think it's about possible. that maybe. It's sort of like how many licks does it take to get the center of a Tootsie Roll pop for right. the world we never know. Yeah, right? we'll never know. It may have already, the wheels might have been in motion and this might not even have had any effect. But it is, the timing is interesting. And it made me yeah, think a lot. Like... We must use this power for good, Grant. Yes, we hold a very um, powerful power. <laughs> the the power of the gamers. Yeah, the, it, it has been used for evil in the past. Let's let's just put it that way. Doxing people mm-hmm. and, and DDoSing and attacking mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. It's definitely been yeah. used for evil. But in this, this is a really cool way to see how it can be used for good. Yep, it's true. Shall we press on? Yes. Yes, yes. So, you want to do the XR thing? Right. XR so, I just asked. actually saw this up. today where, like, you know, people have been talking about how um, Mogu Flesh Aper and then Desert Hair and Evolve and all the things that are happening in Shaman right now mm-hmm. is mm-hmm, more oppressive mm-hmm, mm-hmm. than um, Undertaker Hunter. Were you around during Undertaker Hunter days? Yes, but I wasn't serious. I remember playing against the deck and not understanding how it could beat me so fast because I was such a noob. Well, you'll to to your point though, I saw a vicious syndicate report. Hunter or shaman occupies more than thirty percent of the standard ladder. Yeah, more than thirty percent. Yeah, that's obscene. That's crazy to me. Because the devs always kind of refer to Undertaker Hunter as this benchmark of a deck that was so wide across the meta. Like mm-hmm. this doesn't even approach Undertaker Hunter. You know kind of yeah. when whenever they use their arguments and this is yeah. <laughs> this is approaching undertaker hunter i think it has gone past undertaker hunter and like way behind it like and i mean way behind it was priest so here we are again <laughs> not to mm-hmm. not to be salty or anything here we are again shaman dominates everything and priest is the only thing that's keeping up with it and who wants to play in a in a, in a, in a meta with all shaman and the other thing is priest um flame waker mage also oh that's true flame maker make us close to that's right but yeah so. if, if like <laughs> if three out of four games you play you're either playing shaman or your opponent is playing shaman and it's just like they're listening they want your feedback because as much mm-hmm. as they use the data they have said mm-hmm. over and over again and ixar put it out there as as a response to a bunch of talk on reddit and some you know very well known people in the in the community Mm-hmm. Um, what did he say exactly? Let me find it. Data is just one point of reference, just like feedback. We don't make decisions mm-hmm. based on charts or individual feedback. They just all help contribute towards the final decision. Historically, yeah. we've made more balance changes based on around how something feels to play against rather than how powerful it is because they can argue at us all day. This is actually not that strong of a deck. It has a whole bunch of counters, yada, yada, yada. But if we feel like it feels really bad to lose to, that's huge to them. It matters to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, Evolve Desert Hair is just sometimes that's it. It's dumb. I played that deck. Like when it first came out, I'm like, Evolve Shaman seems really strong. I just like crushed a bunch of games in a row but then i was more interested in wild mm-hmm. and then like about a week or so goes by and i'm in wild hardcore not really paying too much attention to the shaman or not the shaman the standard ladder and then i come back to it and then this next thing i know it's like everybody's just complaining 
shaman this shaman everything shaman you know what i mean it's and it, when games come down to who draws better yeah that's when the game stops being fun in a big way you know what i mean yeah or in it let me qualify that when it comes down to when games too often and too predictably come down to who draws better you know what i mean well they've said it before right you you're just hoping they don't have this one card and if yep. they don't get it then you have a chance but if they have it then you lose and you never want that to be like a coin flip well, it's okay if it happens intermittently, but if it keeps happening, like, with with a regular amount, when it becomes normative, I guess is what I'm trying to say, then that can't, that's not tenable. Like, people stop playing. Well, you know I mean? not only that, but depending on what turn it comes down on. Because <laughs> if it's happening at turn that. seven, you know, that's a bit more, you should have been able to mm-hmm. kind of shore up your defenses or have some kind of reaction or whatever at that point. But if it's happening on turn four or three... Well, you know what though, but you know what the having played the deck a good amount, it, that get deck can has come back mechanic too. It can come back, yeah. Because if you can evolve a board like the Mogu Shaper plus the hairs, I just all evolve. You have not all of a sudden have a giant board. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that may or may not be possible to deal with. So, and I don't think uh, Light Bomb can do the job all the time. <laughs> Well, the thing is, is that Mogu Flesh Shaper and Mutate was something that was already kind of causing people to be upset because mm-hmm. it, it but that's one card resembled a lot um, the way Corridor Creeper worked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then when you added Evolve in there from the Wild set, it was just like, didn't didn't you already see that this was a problem? And then you gave them more tools on top of that. Like what? What were you thinking? And we have well, these for two months. Isn't it interesting that here, what a world we live in, right? Here we are. They they do something that we've been calling for for years, introducing wild cards back into the standard meta. Mm-hmm. They do it. They introduce like some iconic cards. Mm-hmm. I would say almost all of them are iconic. And then are we really going to see cards that used to be in standard that were in wild are not bow back in standard and then they're going to get nerfed <laughs> again? No. You know I, mean, I mean, I think they would just put them back and switch them out for a different card. Like, I think that's what you, you do. think so. Yes. Like I do okay. not. You think you nerf these cards, you switch them out for something else because people didn't have to craft them. You don't have to return dust or anything like that. This what you true. do is you just this pick a different shaman card other than evolve. Mm. Good point. Good point. That seems um, to make more sense than my idea. <laughs> well, the, the problem is some people are like, wait, like there's so much upset about the way Shaman is right now that mm-hmm. we don't want to ignore the fact that there were a bunch of things broken before this ever happened. And if we just yeah. concentrate on how upset we are about this, then there's some other things that are just going to get pushed under the rug and ignored. And then when the yeah. two months is up, it's like, now we're back with Amit and Mogu mm-hmm. Flesh Shaper. And... I don't mind the Druid quest. No, Druid quest is fine. I don't think it's oppressive. I think the Shaman quest can be. Yeah. I think that's the other thing. That's the other thing is it's not just Evolve Shaman. Quest Shaman is still good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the Quest Shaman, if you know how to play that deck, I think you can just destroy people. I've noticed that, you know, App- Appa, our friend from Coin Concede, you know, he's been, he's a well-known Shaman player. That's kind of his jam. It's his, it's his class. And I've been following him, and he's been getting very high legend levels, higher than he had previously, because Shaman's really good, and he happens to be very good at Shaman. He's a good player, but he's really good at Shaman. That's kind of his jam. You know, so when he's, like, crushing it, it tells me that not only is Shaman good, but people who are good at Shaman, like, just even level up, a, you know, a, a two degrees about that. So, well, and then I think, I, I, I don't Shaman know. I a lot. Like, it, it was one of my... You know, classes that I'd love to play back in the day when it was like, yeah. you know, aggro shaman with totem golem and stuff, yeah. which, which still makes deck. ridiculous hat fume. <laughs> <laughs> but this just, I actually don't like this deck and you would think it would be one of my favorites. Yeah, but I thought you'd not, be all up in that. It just doesn't have the things that I like. It's very, you just want to mulligan so hard for these broken combos. And that makes it a mm-hmm. combo deck. It doesn't make it a mid-range. It doesn't make doesn't make it an aggro. Like that, mm-hmm. they take out the quest because they just want to mulligan really hard for doing broken evolve stuff. And it's not like yeah. put this card down and this card down and this card down and have like a, a game. 
But you know what's something I do want to go to Hall of Fame is MC Tech. Yeah, I can go for that. I am so tired of it punishing solid boards. Like you work hard to make your minions stick. You work hard to build them up. And that is your game as a mid-range deck. And for somebody just to throw down one card and steal that from you is so overpowered, especially when you consider that mind control in Priest is 10 mana. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, and it's so enraging. So if they want to hear a card that makes people really upset, MC Tech is, is one of the ones that has a really visceral reaction for a lot of people. Well, they took it out of Arena for that reason. It was in arena forever. It was an auto pick in arena, and then they found, and then the arena people just raged so much that they said, "Okay, we'll take it out." And the peasants rejoiced. We were like, "Yes, you know, well, no more of this." These are my cards. I don't want you to take my cards. You know, the reason that the priest's mind control is ten mana is because that's how much it should cost to take my card. <laughs> you should have to sacrifice a whole turn to take it. Damn it! Because these Didn't are mine. Mind control used to be eight mana, like early on yeah. in the set, like when it was eight mana, and that was like way tilting, and people couldn't handle that. So they, I think they bumped it up to nine, realized that wasn't enough, and I think they bumped it to ten, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I remember Pyroblast was cheaper too. So are we getting confused mm -hmm. between Pyroblast and mind control? Because I think Pyroblast. No, I remember was mind control used to be cheaper too. But I mean, if, if I'm wrong, it's fine. I'm not. I'm not hanging my hat on it. But I, I I'm pretty sure it was cheaper. But it was one of those things where it was just able to be played too early yeah. so you could just and you could have mana left over to do things mm -hmm. that's the thing when you can do a crazy broken thing and then have mana left over to do something else that's it should yep. be like i'm making this decision and i'm kind of putting all of my eggs in one basket and i'm you know putting myself out there to do this big move and mc tech just yeah. doesn't punish that way you know like yeah especially when all of your cards are good cards <laughs> Like, if you had a whole bunch of little weenie ones and he grabbed, like, the wrong one, maybe. But if you have a mid-range deck and, like, every card you're playing is something you want to keep and work with and use, and then they just yank one, it's... And then if they use the hero power and do it twice, <laughs> then you just yeah. want to... <laughs> yeah, that, that tilts me. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I haven't played enough against Evolve Shaman to be as angry as some of the people are out there. But it is the call for change, definitely. And mm -hmm. I, I say, just give us something else. Pick a different card from Shaman, from Wild, mm -hmm. and something that's, you know, defining but not OP like this. And mm -hmm. then probably have to take a look at Mutate and Mogu Flesh Shaper because historically zero mana spells have not, <laughs> not been great for the game. No. No, I, I could see that. So, you know... So that's kind of what's going on in the standard ladder. But in the wild ladder, the wild ladder is almost worse. What's happening in wild? Wild is uh, is basically dominated by uh, Snip Snack Snap Warlock. Snip Snap Warlock. Okay. Basically with the combination of the, uh, what's the portal called? It's uh, the card that nobody plays except for in this deck. It's the Warlock portal. That's like a 0-4 minion that makes your minions cost two less but not less than one. Uh-huh. So so basically, they do Mech Warper plus this portal, and now Snip Snap costs zero, and keeps costing zero until they can get, you know, they, huge minions and kill you in a turn, no matter until what. Until they run out of time, because the until rope they run burns out of time. away. And it can literally be a, uh, you know, APM kind of deck too. Not easy play per se on mobile, but on a computer, it's it's fine, um, and. It's definitely, like, by far the best deck in Wild. And it can be countered by Mage if Mage is running, like, a Polymorph Secret, you know, um, or has Ice Block. So if you can kill them, they, they hit you with, like, you know, a 50-50 Snip Snap. Um, I don't know if that's what it would actually be, but let's just say, for sake of argument, that it's huge like that. And they hit you in the dome, but you Ice Block, and then you can kill them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Secret Mage kind of counters it. And then... Ro uh, 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 even rogue odd rogue sorry odd rogue is vanish. the third deck no you can't use vanish because it's six cost six you can only play with odd cost cards oh odd so, rogue, great now yes yeah, uh, sap and vanish would be awesome vanish would be incredible but then the deck is sig significantly weakened so 
it's one of those things you're not playing odd rogue to get to the point where warlock can you know build a snip snap and destroy you yeah they need to address um, whenever something costs zero and you can continue to cast it into infinity well and the thing is is that snip snap that can be that can happen on term as early as term four five or six depending and yeah, it's one of those things quick. where when it happens, it's it's the definite the classic problem of this is unfun because it happens too easily and I can do actually nothing about it. Taunt. Yeah, depending. Silence. It just depends. But the thing is, is early game they can put a bunch of mechs up, and, and every single one them of them all, they is only need one. A threat. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I hated about so. Mecha Hunter. Well, it's the same problem that uh, that inner fire priest is. Right. Same problem. Every big fat body is a threat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're either choosing to just try and mow them down as fast as you can and take your chances, or you're mm -hmm. just trading the entire game away until you die. Yep. And there's there there's a point in time where you realize that you actually had never had a chance to start with. So that's kind of the the utility. That's kind of the news and wild. Now, I find that people make a lot of mistakes with Snip Snap um, because I've beaten it a fair amount of times, but I play Rogue, and Rogue's sort of my jam. Um, so it might be that I'm playing Rogue better than than the average Rogue player, maybe. Hopefully, I hope that's true. Um, but then, like, Seek, then Mage just dumpsters me. You know what I mean? <laughs> make his Mage just, I can't out, I can't beat them. And I think there's some cards in Secret Mage that have really put that deck over the top. You know, Snip Snap's the problem, being able to put a zero, whatever. But Mage has some cards that are just really, really just add so much extra burn to the deck. Like that 4-4 minion, if you possess a secret, do six damage. Can go to face, can go to minions, can go wherever. That's huge. That's huge. An extra 12 damage in the deck is huge. So, um, so I I worry that Wild is is like pretty much super stale at the moment um i still play it for some reason i'm enjoying it a lot because i've been having my new portrait you say that but then you're not even playing standard <laughs> no i played a lot of wild i played then standard is is standard standard is, is definitely my uh not my favorite format in comparison to i always like wild better i guess i just like having all the options even if it gets infuriating i still like having all the cord card choices i just because when you've been dug in as deep as i have you just don't like not using your cards you so. don't like not having access to Lothab. I like Lothab. Lothab has won me many games. Many, many games. He's a good Dropping player. a Lothab at the right time and doing it just perfectly, it's just so satisfying. <laughs> it's just so satisfying. She's no, like, Priest, you you don't you get to do? resurrect anything. <laughs> you don't no get to mage. Earthquake or, or what's that nine mana one that silences and destroys everything? Mm, let's see silences that's uh it's a plague plague of death yeah what is it plague of death yes yeah yeah because i've been playing secret mm. paladin in uh -oh, standard, in standard. <laughs> how is that it's got you got uh was it revenge is that what the secret is that buffs it it was or like avenge it's avenge right yeah it was like seeing an old friend again that i hadn't seen in years and asking is it fun? them how's it how's it going how's it doing what's changed i had fun yep i i got my five wins because you got to get that to get the chest and the um the card back for the month and just just kind of doodled around with secret paladin <laughs> which is crazy um yeah. I, I thought about trying it but i was like i don't know it, I didn't know if I I, I kind of liked Secret Paladin back in the day. I played a fair amount of it, but I don't know if I want to revisit it. I like playing other things, but that's just me. It's not as as crazy as it was because there's so many other decks doing crazy things. But I still had fun and still won games, so it was nice. And I wanted to play it more than I wanted to play Evolve Shaman. So that's crazy to me. I thought you'd be like Evolve Shaman's my jam, going for Legend, all that stuff, and right? you're like, nah, it's a combo deck. <laughs> it's just like. I, I don't like to give people a hard time who like to play certain decks, right? Yeah. Because when, when people were on the bandwagon and everyone was playing Undertaker Hunter, it was like, you're a toxic player. You're, this is a cancer deck and stuff. And I'm like, I yeah, don't like yeah. guilting people for playing a deck that wins or yeah. playing a deck that they like for their reasons. But 
it doesn't make me feel good to play that deck. So I don't play it. Right. That's all. Uh, that's where I'm at. I if I don't like playing something, I don't play it. Yep. You know, I'm not. I've done. I've done enough stuff in Hearthstone where I'm totally fine with. I don't feel like I have to prove anything. You know what I mean? And also, I don't have the time, even if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I. So like, if I'm not enjoying it, I'm not playing the game. If I don't enjoy what I'm doing, there's no reason for me to invest precious time in something that I'm not enjoying. Just for what you know. So. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, if Secret Paladin makes you happy and you enjoy it when you're doing it, then that's fine. You <laughs> do it. <laughs> yep. It even, so, anyways. <sighs> so, well, um, is there anything else we need to cover before we uh, we're gonna keep the show a little short this week? But um, um, well, you you and I need to minutes. get together and and flesh it out a little bit more. But we we would like to put some goals on our Patreon for mm-hmm. um. For listeners of the show to kind of work towards if you have the money and the inclination and what i would like to start offering is more lore episodes but it does take a decent amount of time to like do the research and sit mm-hmm. down and record it and make sure it's the quality that i am happy with and proud of so if we hit a certain goal to be decided upon by Grant and I, um, mm-hmm. then I'm going to start putting out more lore episodes more often. So if that is something that you're interested in, um, talk to us in Discord or sign up for Patreon and support us, yeah. support the show and show us that you like what we make and you would like to help make it happen. Yeah, because the lore episodes are are sometimes they're substitutes for regular episodes, but Every time we put one out, people are like, this is, we love this. And, and we get, I, Eve, you probably know this, Eve, but I always hear more uh, feedback when we put out a lore episode than when we just put out regular episodes. Not to say that one is necessarily superior than the other. It's just that people just really, really, it just resonates with them and they really like it. Well, because you're really good at st- storytelling, Eve. So, um, uh, you are. You really are. Oh um, and, uh, yes, blush on camera. Um, so, uh, uh the other thing I was thinking about doing was it was composing some special music for it too, yeah. and maybe some underscoring. So looking to up the production level, but see the thing is, is that takes a lot of time. That's not just something like oh, I'll just toss off a, a you know a thirty minute composition, you know, just because I have the time to do so because I don't. But if the Patreon goals were met, I could I would start working on that. So yes, and I would I would make take the time and make the time. Even with my busy schedule and your busy schedule, if we know that the interest is there and the support is there and that's what people would like us to do and that's what they would like to support. So, Yep. So if you're interested, just uh, drop us a note. And if there's anything else you'd like us to potentially offer, we're open to any suggestions. No suggestion is too big or too small. So anyways, uh, I guess that about does it for the show. Um, Eve, where can people find you if they want to get in touch? You can find me on Twitter at Laura Master Eve. Um, I'm playing a lot of Destiny 2 these days because there's a ton of lore there that's happening. Oh, uh, yeah. I should probably do another episode, but it's just, it keeps being revealed. So I don't want to do one until I know the whole story. Otherwise, I'd be mm-hmm. like, dot, 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 to be continued. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun over there in Destiny on PlayStation 4. Yeah. Which is sort of, you know, mild teaser, which is one of the reasons why we haven't done Laura on Anduin yet. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and buy those clues. So uh, we'll just leave that there. Um, Eve uh, and anybody else. <laughs> That's why I said that. I know I said your name, Eve. Uh, if you want to find me on the interweb, uh, Twitter is probably the best place to find me at WatchmanHS. Friend me in game, Watchman hashtag 1140. Um, play games with you um i'll just play if you want to practice a deck or you want me to try something that you have and see if it works or you want to try one of my decks i have a golden whiz bang that's available for your use uh friend me and game we'll play games together um and yeah that's about it um eve sign us out not all who wander are lost bye everybody take care Okay. And, uh, I guess. <laughs>
Did I miss it? <laughs>